Good evening. I'm Cersei Miller, Jazz and World Music Program Coordinator at Wellesley College. On behalf of Wellesley College, the Wellesley College Department of Music, Professor Germander Bogle Chair, and the Wellesley College Virtual Concert Series, I am thrilled to be able to introduce Linda May Han Oh as this evening's very special guest artist. Linda May Han Oh is one of the most innovative and respected artists on the creative music scene today. An in-demand double and electric bassist, band leader, recording artist, educator, and composer. Born in Malaysia and raised in Perth, Western Australia, Linda May Han Oh began playing piano and bassoon and at 15 took up the electric bass in high school jazz band before attending the WA Academy of Arts and later the Manhattan School of Music. Linda May Han Oh went on to win numerous scholarships and awards, including being named the number one acoustic bassist rising star in the Downbeat Critics Poll while pursuing a wide range of cutting edge musical endeavors. Linda May Han Oh has performed with musicians such as Joe Lovano, Steve Wilson, B.J. Iyer, Dave Douglas, Kenny Barron, Jerry Allen, Fabian Almazan, and Terry Lynn Carrington. She's currently a member of Pat Metheny's Quartet, which has recently released a new album, From This Place, with accompanying videos. Linda May Han Oh's extensive recording credits include four widely praised albums as a leader. In 2019, she released Aventurine on Biophilia Records, winning several awards. Founded by Fabian Almazan, Biophilia Records has a mission to unite environmental awareness with music, commissioning up and coming writers who are actively dealing with environmental sacrifice zones. Interested writers should contact biophiliarecords.com. Current projects include the EFG London Jazz Virtual Festival on November 16th and a cross collaboration with Australian artists and the Detroit Symphony Orchestra String Quartet. This coming spring, our jazz and world music students at Wellesley look forward to being able to work closely with Linda May Han Oh, who will be visiting Wellesley virtually as resident artist. Once again, we welcome Linda May Han Oh and the Linda May Han Oh and Fabian Almazan duo to our Wellesley College virtual concert series.
sorry, I just had my mic muted. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, this live stream. My name is Linda Mahan O. Oh. Um, that was a tune called Mantis. And I uh, recorded that at the Jazz Standard live in New York City. Uh, it's Ben Wendell on tenor saxophone, Rudy Royston on drums, Matthew Stevens on guitar, and Fabian Almazan, who's on piano, who you'll hear a little bit later on in our duo set. Uh, that was the tune that I composed in Gwangju in South Korea at the Gwangju World Music Festival, something I composed for a group of musicians that were from all over the world, from Korea, from Australia, from Japan. It's really an interesting collaboration because we only really had one language in common with maybe one other person within the group. So we had this beautiful train of communication where I'd speak to someone in English, they would speak to someone in uh, Japanese, and that person would speak to another person in Korean. And we managed to get a set of music together in a short amount of time and record so um yeah so now we're going to move on to a tune of mine called speech impediment and this is a song that i composed and released on my 2017 album walk against wind it's a story about a man who loves a woman but he can't seem to tell her because he's got such a bad stuttering problem but he finds out his love and it's a happy ending in the end and uh it's kind of about looking beneath the exterior and um yeah um sincerity and hope you enjoy it thank you
So that was a tune called Speech Impediment, uh, recorded in Brooklyn a couple of years ago. Uh, and now we're going to start the live stream, um, the live stream concert that we recorded a couple of days ago here in Perth, Western Australia, where I'm streaming from. Um, this was recorded in our living room here. We're currently based in New York City, but um, here temporarily. Uh, we have a set of music uh, duo uh, with Fabian Almazan, who you see playing Rhodes and piano on the last few uh, videos. And we begin the set with a tune called Poets by, by Fabian Almazan. It's a beautiful song that he wrote for his latest album, This Land Abounds With Life. And it includes a lot of field recordings of endemic bird species in Cuba, as well as um, other field recordings that he gathered on his travels in Cuba. He's originally from Havana, Cuba. And um, it includes a sample, a few different samples of a poet that he met on the side of the street uh, who came up with a 10 line decimal poem on the spot. So that's what you can hear act being activated, some of the samples. Um, and um, all these electronics are, are manipulated a lot, manipulated live, so there's no, no post-production when it comes to that stuff. Um, then the second tune we'll play is a tune of mine called Zenith, and that's something that will be arranged for the Wellesley College Big Band. And I'm really excited to be working with all the students um, and faculty there, I'll see there. So, and then we're going to follow that with a tune called Howler. It's a song by Fabian. And then we're going to finish the set with a song of mine called The Noise of Us, which was recently featured on um, an Australian awards night um, a couple of months ago. And it's basically about the impact of humans um, around their environment and kind of the noise that we kind of create sometimes. So that's The Noise of Us and this is duo with uh, Fabian Almasan. Thank you. Dice, yo poeta, dentro del monte, hago la décima mía. Con cariño y alegría por el pico de un chinchón.
Fantastic music. What an evening. We're here with uh, Linda Mahan O oh, soon, and she will be able to take some of your questions from the live stream chat. So, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful music, um, Linda and Fabian. That was truly amazing. I've been getting messages from my family that it's watching my students they're just enraptured. So beautiful. Um, I guess we'll just go right into some questions that people have been asking on the live stream chat. Uh, the first one is from Steve and he asks, what is your composing process? Linda, I think you're muted. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think Linda's getting her mic on. Yeah, I can't, we can't hear you. Based on that. Um, hmm. I, yeah, we can hear I, you now. I think that might be something on Isabel's end. Okay, cool. No problem. Great. Okay, <laughs> cool. Welcome to 2020. Yes. We are moving on. So yes, my composing process, it depends. Uh, it depends on the situation, depends on the, the song I'm working on, all of this. Um, it could revolve around a certain melodic idea, could revolve around a certain uh, storyline, for example, about. speech impediment was something um, that was based on a story. Uh, Mantis was something that was based uh, particularly on a, a traditional Korean rhythm because I was writing a group of musicians um, who were improvising and particularly some musicians who didn't do music and I was trying to find a common ground and for some of these musicians it meant um, uh, having this thread of this Korean rhythm that we could improvise over. Um, so it, it kind of depends, it, it's always different. Um, maybe Fabian has something to contribute because you had two beautiful compositions in your, in that set. Mostly plagiarism. I just try to steal as much as I can and not get credit to anyone. It's borrowing. <laughs> and my banjo. Yeah. No, yeah. No, it's the same. It's the same process. I guess we should have, I mean, for me personally, I try to keep a very fine balance between the sort of ethereal, mysterious qualities of art and life and also the architecture of music. Uh, just trying to analyze as many scores as I possibly can trying to listen to as many different uh, types of music from as many different sources of cultures as I can. Um, and I think it varies from uh, artist to artist. Some people like Brahms felt that it was more important uh, for music to just exist for music's sake. Uh, he was very much an absolute music sort of uh, composer. <clears throat> but I feel like in these times, um, I feel like I would have to be crazy to uh, ignore what's happening in the world. So I feel like uh, as artists, well, I'll just speak for myself, as an artist, it's my responsibility um, to provide people with some sort of uh, scenario where they can question things, they can question themselves, and they have uh, an emotional outlet. And plagiarism. Um, who was it that said that plagiarism was the sincerest form of flattery? But someone did. <laughs> um, another yes. question I think come, comes from Isabel, and she said that um, she's asking how much Cuban influence is there and what each of your influences are. What do you think some of your strongest influences are? I don't know your... <laughs> Uh, so Fabian's from Havana, Cuba. Um, so I guess there's a lot of Cuban influence there. Your father was a bass player. Um, well, yeah, is well no longer playing, but mm -hmm. is a bass. Um, yeah, I mean, I th uh, I've I've been asked that question often, and <clears throat> uh, I, I've traveled throughout the well. I used to travel throughout the world a lot. Um, <laughs> which is a wonderful house. It's got lovely corners. Uh, but no, it's just getting to meet different people throughout the world uh, made me realize that uh, we're all basically the same, everybody to be loved and to love people and have very good food. So at, at its source, uh, being from Cuba definitely plays a role <clears throat> in who I am, but I, I am very aware that it's a big world. There's a lot of different people. and. Um, one of the most meaningful experiences I've ever had was going to Johannesburg in South Africa and talking to people about the apartheid 
and what Nelson Mandela was all about, which was to bring people together. So yes, it's very important to be firmly grounded in our individual cultures, but I think the goal in the end is to be able to, to see our reflections in each other so that we can all come together. That's beautiful. <laughs> and plagiarism. <laughs> plagiarism. The theme um, of today is plagiarism. <laughs> um, what, are, what are our influences? Well, you know, a lot of things. Obviously, jazz music, you know, we're both um, trained, quote unquote, um, in the field of jazz. We've been heavily influenced by um, early traditions of jazz and, and more um, contemporary uh, bass players um, who have influenced me, Charles Mingus, um, Dave Holland, Ray Brown, you know, just to, for some, some examples, specific instruments. Um, but yeah, we draw influences. Um, Fabian mentioned um, some classical musicians, but also, um, you know, I, I come from some firm Australian rock roots <laughs> in, in some ways. So, uh, yeah, all over the place. Um, um, yeah, every, everything from when I was growing up and starting electric bass, I was, it was mainly figuring out a lot of Rage Against Machine and Metallica and, and then kind of progressing somehow in the back of the way into jazz music through to Miles Davis and, and um, Wayne Shorter and Jaco Pastorius and Murder Report and, um, and then earlier um, from the Levin, Ray Brown, uh, Oscar Peterson. And I was very lucky to have an old sister who had a very eclectic music taste. She would the music. Yeah, she was a harpist and she was doing music, um, everything from John John to Michelle and David Cello to um, uh, Miles Davis, all eras, you know. So I, I think it's very important and very great to have people in your life who can show you things like that, you know. Soon for everybody out there <laughs> to know. She's uh, she's on a commercial for Virgin. Um, what was it? Virgin uh, Gyms in South. Well, Africa? that was slight nepotism because you wrote the music yeah. to that Virgin yeah. commercial. <laughs> so that's how I got the gig. Yeah. I have another question from um, Kay Goldschmidt, um, our Wellesley uh, eth ethnomusicologist, and. Kay is asking, a lot of what I enjoy about your music is how textured it is. Can you tell us a bit about how you balance the sound patches you use with your instruments? Uh, there's been a lot of tears over the years. <laughs> it's It's been trial and error, but mostly error. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have had the opportunity with various bands let me just embarrass myself in front of a lot of people often. Um, as, as you can all tell, uh, electricity is uh, uh, Murphy's friend. Um, uh, I, I've always uh, liked chants in, in electronic music. Uh, so, and I think you do too. Um, I don't want to just speak for myself. I mean, I, I want people. Yeah, I don't want to speak for Linda's self. Um, but yeah, I've experimented a lot with electronics and I guess I'm almost looking at it from the perspective of it for an orchestra. Uh, I'm very aware of the, the ranges uh, and sonically how one thing can, um, can emphasize. It, it can almost be like a magician that you think you're looking at something, but it's actually something else. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, th I'm basically very conscious of, of the, the spectrum of, of uh, low pitches to higher pitches and sonically uh, the, the room, you're, you're trying to emulate the, the sound of the reverb, the reverb of a room as well. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to steer clear of just having static samples. And the main software that I use is a plugin called Omnisphere, which really lets you tweak uh, the EQ, basically, of things. And it's got this wonderful feature where it's essentially a randomizer that you as a musician have to react to what the program kind of just throws at you. Uh, so that, that keeps it fresh. I, I've never been one to have specific patches, just specific tunes. It's just kind of, I have this palette 
that I can just drop in whenever I feel uh, appropriate. Mm -hmm. I haven't had breakfast yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're on the other end of things. Uh, I think we only have time for maybe one or two more. Um, uh, uh, we're, you're being asked if you could say a bit about the experience of playing with Matheny, Pat Matheny. Hmm. Yeah, so Pat Matheny has been one of my um, idols for a long, long time. And to be able to play and work with him um, uh, and with this fantastic band with Anthony Sanchez and John and John Simcock and Piano. Um, it's been an incredible ride. I've learned a lot about uh, my own playing, about being within um, uh, the ensemble and, and also composition. Um, it was a real eye-opener working on the album from this place to impose of the producer and the attention to detail is unbelievable and super inspiring. Um, and, um, you know, this is someone I've listened to from my very early days uh, in uh, learning jazz, you know. Um, uh, so many of his records that I know very well, um, tunes that I know very well, solos and bass solos, you know, from all the iconic bass players who've played before him, uh, before me. So, yeah, I, I have, um, you know, I'm just extremely grateful for the opportunity. I think we're just about out of time. And, and there are some student questions um, coming in from Wellesley students who luckily will get a chance to ask you um, again, Linda, because you'll be coming to, to Wellesley. Um, so I think we have to wrap it up here and just thank you so much for coming tonight. Huge thanks to Linda Mehan O oh and Fabian Almansan for, for this evening of great music. We will be so excited to have um, you return to Wellesley College this spring as the virtual resident guest artist in the Jazz and World Music program at Wellesley. Um, and I also want to let everyone know, if you want to be notified about all the wonderful upcoming events in our Wellesley College virtual concert series, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you again for an amazing evening. Thank you so much to our artists. It's so great to see you and hear you. And um, good night to everyone. Beautiful. Thanks, Ceci. Thanks, everyone. Cool. <clears throat>